Here's what the Bible says about cremation of the dead. Does this practice risk losing the resurrection for believers? Did you know that for the first time in history, thousands of people are opting for cremation over traditional burial? And according to experts, this trend will continue to rise, potentially reaching as high as 70% within a decade as the preferred choice over usual burial. This leads to the big question, should Christians consider being cremated by their families? What should Christians think about this very delicate topic, since the promised resurrection in the Bible is at stake? To answer these questions, this video will address four key questions. But first, leave me a comment if you would be willing or not to authorize your own cremation. Let's get to the questions. What is cremation? What does the Bible say about cremation? Will cremation prevent or affect achieving the promise of the resurrected body? What should I take into account before deciding to be cremated or not by my family? Let's start with the first question. What is cremation? Well, it's a process by which a deceased human body is reduced to ashes. How does this happen? Pay attention to this. Before cremation, metal objects such as jewelry or prostheses are removed from the body and the body is placed in a coffin or special container. Then, the body is taken to the crematorium, where it is placed in an oven that reaches extremely high temperatures, about 1,600 degrees Celsius. Perhaps you didn't know this is not immediate and takes several hours. The body is subjected to intense heat and tissues break down and evaporate. And here comes the interesting part. Only bones and bone fragments remain. Listen carefully. It is these bone remains that are ground into a fine powder known as ashes. But these are not like the ashes from a common fire. Let me explain. They are odorless and contain no carbon. Finally, the ashes are collected and placed in an urn. And what follows depends on the wishes of the deceased or their family. Bury them, scatter them, or keep them. Look at this, it will surprise you. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Did you know this statement emphasizes our connection to the earth and the mortality of our bodies? Cremation, in line with this idea, represents a return to this primal essence. When a body undergoes fire, it gradually decomposes into ashes, reminding us of our humility and fragility. Moreover, cremation has gained popularity due to ecological considerations and cultural changes. More than half of Americans now opt for this method, recognizing its spatial efficiency and lower environmental impact. Thus, in the cycle of life and death, cremation becomes an echo of our origin and destiny. Did you know that from a scientific standpoint, cremation is considered a more sustainable option than traditional burial? Stay tuned because research shows that conventional burials require large land areas and use chemicals for embalming, as well as wooden coffins and headstones. And perhaps you haven't stopped to think that this causes a significant environmental impact. If you make a comparison, cremation, although it uses energy and emits carbon, takes up less space and uses fewer resources. And this explains one of the reasons for the growing preference for more ecological practices. In itself, and perhaps you also haven't thought beyond the environmental aspect, cremation also reflects a change in cultural and religious norms. Bet you didn't know that some traditions view it as a method of purification and release, while others seek guidance in the Bible and other sacred texts on this practice. Let's see what the Bible says about cremation. The Bible does not specifically address the practice of cremation or incineration, leaving open the interpretation of how bodies should be handled after death. Although it is not specified whether we should bury or cremate the dead, some biblical passages may provide some context for these practices. What comes next may surprise you. Did you know that in the Bible, there are examples and symbols that can help us understand how God views cremation and burial? This is so you can see throughout the scriptures that fire has multiple meanings. In many cases, fire is associated with purification and divine presence. 
like the burning bush that Moses encountered in the desert in Exodus chapter 3, or the fire that descended from heaven on Mount Carmel during Elijah's confrontation with the prophets of Baal, 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 36 to 39. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also dried up the water in the trench. When the people saw this, they all fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God, the Lord, He is God. So fire does not necessarily carry negative connotations. It's important to remember that the practice of burial has also been a symbol of respect and dignity. Did you know that Abraham bought a cave at Machpelah to bury his wife Sarah in Genesis chapter 23? And Joseph made the sons of Israel promise to carry his bones back to the promised land in Genesis chapter 50 verse 25. I bet you didn't know that. These examples show a strong tradition of burial among God's people. However, these are not explicit mandates for modern Christians, but rather cultural and contextual examples. Keep in mind that as society changes, funeral practices also change. In many places, burial space is limited, and the costs associated with traditional burials can be exorbitant. What does this mean? That in this context, cremation offers a practical and often more affordable alternative. Furthermore, you must consider something fundamental. Above all, in Christian theology, the emphasis is placed on the resurrection and eternal life rather than the state of the physical body after death. Jesus said in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. This message reinforces the idea that our hope is not in the preservation of the physical body, but in the promise of eternal life with God. Let's delve deeper into what the Bible says about cremation. One of the most cited examples is the account in 1 Samuel chapter 31. After the defeat of Saul and his sons in the battle against the Philistines, the Israelites recovered their bodies. The Bible says all their mighty men traveled overnight to Beth Shan and removed the bodies of Saul and his sons from the wall. They brought them to Jabesh, where they burned the bodies. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh and fasted for seven days. Have you considered that the choice to burn the bodies was likely due to the condition they were in, as they could have been mutilated or so damaged that a traditional burial or transporting them for burial was not practical? The text indicates that the bodies were taken from the wall, which suggests they were probably in a deplorable state after the defeat and public exposure. It is very possible that they had suffered mutilations or significant damage that made a traditional burial difficult or even impossible. In these circumstances, cremation might have been the most practical and respectful option for disposing of the remains. Additionally, the fact that the Israelites transported them from Beth Shan to Jabesh to perform the cremation and subsequent burial of the bones indicates that there was an effort to give them a dignified send-off, despite the difficulties. The seven days of fasting also suggest that this was a ceremonial process filled with grief. Therefore, rather than seeing this episode as a deviation from burial norms, it seems that it was a pragmatic solution in the face of tragic circumstances. Cremation was likely chosen as the most appropriate method to honor Saul and his sons, given the condition of their bodies. This passage does not seem to indicate a general rejection of traditional burial, but rather an adaptation to the practical realities of an extreme situation. Based on this, do you think cremation was a common practice in ancient Israel, or was it an exception in this particular case? According to the biblical analysis, cremation appears to have been an exceptional practice in ancient Israel, rather than a customary one. 
The evidence suggests that the traditional culture of burial in tombs or caves was the predominant norm at that time and in that culture. Examples like the patriarchs and kings of the Old Testament who were buried in family graves support this observation. Cremation seems to have been more of an exception than a norm in ancient Israel, reserved for exceptional situations when traditional burial was not feasible. Burial continues to be the dominant practice reflected in the biblical accounts, but what comes next will undoubtedly surprise you. Did you know that there are also references in the Bible where incineration is linked to the penalty of immolation? Although these do not directly relate to voluntary cremation or as a method for disposing of bodies, in Genesis chapter 38 verse 24, the case is mentioned of someone who was condemned to be burned for adultery, although her innocence was later discovered. In Leviticus chapter 20 verse 21, burning is prescribed as punishment for certain transgressions involving the body. In Numbers chapter 16, it narrates how a fire from the Lord consumed 250 men who offered incense in an improper manner. Finally, in Joshua, he and his family are stoned and then burned due to their sin of taking forbidden objects. Notice this so that you understand. These passages reflect the use of fire as a means of punishment or purification, but do not specifically address cremation as a funeral practice. In many cases, as in those you just heard, the burning of bodies was associated with the violation of laws and commandments, indicating a form of divine judgment rather than a directive on how to handle remains. Let's look further. In 2 Kings chapter 21, it describes how King Manasseh practiced abominable rituals, including the sacrifice of his own son in the fire. Although not directly related to cremation, it illustrates the connection between fire and extreme religious acts. On the other hand, in 2 Kings chapter 23, King Josiah confronts pagan worship sites and orders human bones to be burned on the altars in Bethel to defile them. Although cremation as we understand it today is not explicitly mentioned, these events underscore the cultural and spiritual importance of fire in antiquity. Let's analyze it a bit. I will demonstrate that, from a biblical perspective, the handling of bones and remains has profound spiritual implications. In Numbers chapter 19, it is established that whoever touches someone who has been killed and buried will be unclean for seven days, underlining the view of death as an event that creates ritual separation and requires purification. Did you get that? This has left room for various interpretations and adaptations within Christian principles. For example, some Christian denominations accept cremation as a modern and appropriate practice, as long as it is carried out with respect and dignity, while others reject it due to its historical or doctrinal connotations. This ambiguity allows Christian funeral beliefs and practices to evolve, adapting to new realities without losing sight of the fundamental principles of respect and reverence for the deceased. Let me explain now, from an environmental perspective, did you know that cremation has a smaller ecological footprint for several reasons? First, it requires less space than traditional cemeteries, freeing up land for other purposes. Additionally, it avoids the release of methane during the decomposition of bodies, a greenhouse gas that damages the environment. Second, and this indeed represents a significant saving, is that cremation uses fewer material resources such as coffins and headstones, reducing its environmental impact. However, I will reveal something that will surprise you even more. Besides traditional burial, which appears to have been the predominant practice in ancient Israel and some exceptional cases of cremation that we have seen so far, there were also some other funeral practices that were also common. Did you know that embalming, although not as frequent as in Egypt, was a known practice in Israel? Perhaps you do not know, but an example is the preparation of Jacob's body, which was embalmed before being transported to Canaan to be buried in Genesis chapter 50. Now the third question, will cremation affect our resurrected bodies? Will it prevent us from receiving this promise? 
Let's explore some relevant biblical principles to determine the answer. Let's break this down. Regarding glorified bodies in 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul speaks about the resurrected bodies. He describes how our mortal bodies will be transformed into incorruptible, glorious, and spiritual bodies. It doesn't matter if we were buried, cremated, or lost at sea. God has the power to resurrect us and grant us a new body. Here the Apostle Paul addresses the issue that our bodies are buried in humiliation. But what does that mean? It means that death is a reminder of our human fragility and limitations. But the good news is that they will be resurrected in glory. This means that our transformed bodies will reflect divine majesty and perfection. He also talks about the transformation from weakness to strength. Our current bodies are vulnerable, subject to disease, pain, and aging. However, in the resurrection, following Paul's teaching, they will be clothed with strength and will no longer be limited by earthly weaknesses. He further explains that they will go from natural to spiritual. Our current bodies are natural, suited to this life on earth, but in the resurrection, they will be spiritual. What does this mean? It doesn't mean we will be ghosts or ethereal entities, but that our bodies will be in harmony with the Spirit of God, free from physical limitations and connected to eternal life. Now comes a surprising analysis. Pay attention. Regarding the freedom of God, the Bible also emphasizes the sovereignty of God. He has the power to restore and transform any body, regardless of its original state. Cremation does not limit God's ability to fulfill His promises. Let's explore this topic in more detail. The Bible presents God as the creator and sustainer of the entire universe. His power is infinite and is not limited by natural laws or human circumstances. In the context of resurrection, this idea is crucial. God has the power to restore and transform, even beyond what we can comprehend. In 1 Thessalonians 4, there's the cornerstone of the promise of resurrection. It describes a future event when Jesus will return. When this happens, those who died in Christ will rise first. Then, those who are alive at that time will be caught up together with the resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. This refers to the gathering of all believers with Jesus. It's important to highlight the independence of the physical state. Notice that the verse emphasizes that the dead in Christ will rise, regardless of their previous physical state. Here's the key takeaway. Pay close attention. It doesn't matter if they were buried, cremated, or even lost at sea. God has the power to restore and transform any body. The resurrection implies a radical change to incorruptible and glorious bodies. Now, the most challenging question. I am a Christian and am considering cremation. What should I take into account? There are several aspects you should analyze to make an informed decision and be at peace with your faith. First, consider the doctrine and teachings of your church. What does your congregation think if you belong to one? Quite honestly, some, like the Catholic Church, now allow cremation, provided it is not chosen for reasons contrary to the Christian faith and that the remains are treated with respect, including burial in a sacred place. Other Protestant denominations may have a more open or more restrictive view. It's important to know your church's specific stance on cremation. Second, consider the spiritual and theological significance of cremation in terms of how it aligns with your beliefs about the resurrection and eternal life. Some biblical interpretations emphasize traditional burial in the earth as a way to symbolize hope in bodily resurrection, while others may see cremation as an equally valid process provided it is carried out with due respect and dignity. Third, reflect on the rituals and customs associated with death and burial in your faith community. Talk to your pastor or spiritual leader about how these practices can be adapted to honor both your wishes and the traditions of your faith. Fourth, evaluate the family and community impact. Consider how your family and friends would feel about cremation. Death and funerals are deeply personal moments and it's important that the decision is respectful and understandable to your loved ones. 
Openly discussing your wishes can help avoid misunderstandings and ensure that your intentions are honored. Fifth, consider the practical and legal aspects. Investigate local laws and cremation regulations in your area. Also, consider the practical and financial aspects. Cremation may be less costly than traditional burial, but it's essential to plan properly all the details, including the handling of the ashes. Sixth, consider respecting memory and legacy. Ensure that the cremation process respects your memory and legacy in a way that is meaningful to you and your faith. This might include choosing an appropriate place for the ashes, such as a columbarium, a cemetery, or a special place that has spiritual significance for you. Ultimately, seek a decision that brings you inner peace. Death is an inherent part of life, and we all must face it at some point. The essential thing is that you choose what resonates with your values and beliefs and find tranquility in that choice. While this tends to be a delicate topic, Beyond the verses about what the Bible says about cremation, according to biblical accounts, there is no clear prohibition established. The decision to be buried or cremated should be based on careful reflection about personal faith, church teachings, practical concerns, and family desires. The most important thing is to live with the hope of resurrection and the promise of eternal life in Christ, maintaining peace and tranquility in the decision you make. Dear God, we thank you for your infinite wisdom and love, guiding us in all matters of life, including the delicate decision regarding the fate of our bodies after death. We ask that you enlighten our hearts and minds as we reflect on the practice of cremation and its relationship to the Christian faith. Lord, you have reminded us through the scriptures that our bodies are temporary and that our true home is with you in eternity. Help us understand that whether we are buried or cremated, what matters most is our faith in you and the promise of resurrection. May we always trust in your power to transform and restore, regardless of the state of our physical bodies. Father, we ask for wisdom to make decisions that honor you and respect our traditions and beliefs. May we find inner peace in choosing what is best for us and our loved ones, knowing that our hope is firmly anchored in your promise of eternal life. Grant us the grace to live according to your teachings, focused on the resurrection and eternal life, and not on earthly concerns about the state of our bodies after death. May our life and our decisions be a reflection of our faith in you and the certainty that in Christ we have victory over death. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Leave your thoughts on the topic in the comments, always respecting the opinions of others. I hope you enjoyed the video. If this content was valuable to you, please support me with your subscription so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Share this video with family and friends, give a like, and leave your opinion in the comments. This helps the video reach more people. Together we can enlighten more minds and expand our understanding. Thank you for being here and may God bless you.